This episode of iFanboy is all about the God of Thunder, Thor. Ron is talking about what you need to know before you go see the movie. Connor is taking us through Walt Simonson's Thor Omnibus. And Josh is counting down the top five Thor artists of all time. of iFanboy. My name is Ron Richards, and I'm here at the most excellent Isotope Comics in San Francisco, and I'm getting ready for the Thor movie. We know it's coming. It's opening this Friday. Super excited. It's been hyped up for the past year. We all know everything that we've seen from the trailers and the panels and all the information. We know that Chris Hemsworth is starring in it. Anthony Hopkins is Odin. Kenneth Branagh directing it. But I sat down. I'm like, well, what else do I need to know about the movie? I'm sure, you know, as I'm not a huge Thor fan, and maybe you aren't either. So I watched the second trailer, which I thought was a little better than the first one, and took a little notes, did some research, I thought I'd share it with you. So the trailer opens up, and we see the back head of Agent Coulson, who we recognize from Iron Man 2, the, the very stoic S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. And we know that they found Mjolnir. We saw that at the end of uh, Iron Man 2. I might not have said Mjolnir correctly, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, and so we know that Thor is coming. But what else in the trailer was that was interesting? I found that Natalie Portman's character as Jane Foster was interesting because you might recognize her most recently from Thor the Mighty Avenger as Thor's earthbound romantic interest. Um, might not, you might not know that the character Jane Foster goes all the way back to the days of Journey into Mystery in the 60s, and she was created by Stan, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. She was originally a nurse that was an assistant to Thor's, uh, Thor's alter ego, Don Blake, and served as Thor's romantic interest on Earth as well. In the movie, they changed her a little different. Now she's an astrophysicist, so she's not a nurse or anything in the medical. Um, and of clearly, you know, we're assuming that she's going to be her, um, she's going to be Thor's romantic interest in the movie, not Sif, which is his Asgardian romantic interest. Now, one little Easter egg I did find in the trailer uh, was there's a big wide shot of the town that Natalie Portman lives in and that she brings Thor to when he arrives on Earth or Midgard, for you Asgardians out there. Um, I don't know for sure whether or not this is Broxton, Oklahoma. It'd be really cool if it was. And for those who don't know, Broxton, Oklahoma, that's the town currently where Asgard's ruins are. The big battle of siege happened there, and that's where Asgard was moved when it moved away from the space and came down to Earth. Um, but by looking at the movie, I got a feeling it's probably going to be like Nevada or something like that. It would be too cool to have it to be in Broxton, Oklahoma. But there was something really cool. I paused the trailer, and you can see here that on the billboard, there's like a travel billboard, and there it says Journey into Mystery, a little nod towards the original comic that Thor originally appeared in back in the 60s. So keen eyes who paused the trailer might have noticed in the background behind Thor before he faces off against the Destroyer, you see three Asgardians standing behind him. Sure enough, those are the Warriors Three. Super, super popular characters that were, aren't actually from Norse mythology. They were created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in the 60s and Journey into Mystery. There are three uh, warriors who travel together and are friends of Thor. The Warriors, warriors Three are made up of Volstagg, Fandral, and Hogan. And in the movie, Volstagg is actually played by Ray Stevenson, who also played the Punisher in Punisher Warzone, a hotly debated uh, Punisher movie, whether it was good or not. But sure enough, Ray Stevenson continues his role, uh, comic book roles as he takes the ever-popular Volstagg, the guy with the big beard. Um, Hogan is the guy with the mace, who's, um, who's seen also in the trailer fighting Frost Giants. And we see Fran Fandral very briefly. Fandral's the guy who looks kind of like an Errol Flynn, Robin Hood type. So one of the other big action sequences that have shown up in both trailers have been Thor facing off against the Destroyer. That's that big, metal, giant kind of dude that was on display at the San Diego Comic-Con a couple of years ago. Originally introduced in Journey into Mystery 118, created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, uh, the Destroyer is an enchanted suit of armor that Odin enchanted and then was stolen by Loki and used to fight against Thor. The Destroyer is interesting because it's been around for over 40 years of continuity in the Marvel comics, keeps popping up, and it's a much wanted weapon because the Destroyer is really the only thing that's come close to killing Thor. It's so popular, in fact, that it's been utilized to fight uh, Hulk when he was in his maestro form. Dr. Doom got his hands on it at one point, and it continues to be uh, kind of a thorn in th Thor's side as Loki constantly gets access to it and pits it against Thor. So towards the end of the trailer, we see some of the other Asgardians that made their way into the movie, like the ever-popular Heimdall, who stands on the Rainbow Bridge protecting the City of Gods from other intruders, as well as his sister, Sif, who was Thor's romantic interest in the comics in Asgard, but in the movie, we're not quite sure whether she'll have a romantic angle. We only see her in the Frost Giant scene and the action scene, but even if she's in it, that's a good nod towards the comics and towards the uh, whole North, Norse mythology of Thor. And so that wraps up what I gleaned from the second trailer of Thor. I'm super excited for the movie. I'm sure you are too. Even non-Thor fans, you've got to check this movie out because there's so many great Thor stories over the years that have been told by Marvel Comics. In this episode, Josh and Connor are both going to give you uh, kind of their opinions of Thor stories over the years, including Connor's going to be looking at this monster, the Walt Simonson Thor Omnibus, which not only is filled with amazing comics, amazing art, amazing stories, could be used to kill him. Hi, my name is Connor Kilpatrick. And we talked about doing this Thor show. I started thinking to myself, what am I going to do for my segment? And then I thought, 
one of my favorite Thor runs because I've always been a Thor fan. I've always been uh, an Avenger guy in the Marvel Universe. I've always liked the Avenger side of things, Captain America and Thor and Iron Man. And throughout the years, I always bought Thor books. I didn't always, I haven't always bought them, but I've always tried them. So I've always come along different creative teams. And when I was a kid, I really loved Thor because he was this big guy with a hammer and he bashed stuff with it, which when you're a kid is the best thing ever and sometimes even when you're an adult too. So I was thinking to myself, what was my favorite Thor run? Uh, you know, historically, there's been a lot of great runs on Thor. A lot of great creators have worked on Thor. Dan Jurgens is a notable one. John Romita Jr. has drawn Thor. Uh, a lot of people like JMS's run. Olivier Coipel on the art and that. So there's been a lot of great Thor runs throughout the years, going back even to Kirby in the beginning. But I thought, what was my favorite? When I think of Thor, who do I picture? How does he look? Who drew him? Who wrote him? In my head, who is Thor? And I came up with an answer. And luckily enough for me... Marvel just put out a collection of that run. It's right here. Ugh. It's the Walter Simonson omnibus that Marvel just put out a few weeks ago. It collects Simonson's entire classic run from the 80s. This, to me, is this is Thor. This is how I think of Thor. I think of him all scraggly with the, with the beard, which is how Simonson drew him. Um, also, clean shaven, of course, but that's how I think of Thor, scraggly bearded Thor. This is amazing. First of all, it's goddamn heavy. But, um, and it's thick, it's over a thousand pages. It's Simonson, Simonson wrote Thor for four years in the 80s, and he drew Thor for half that run. And this is the entire run. The other half, where he didn't draw it, was drawn by Sal Bushima, who's a great artist in and of himself. So, to me, when this, came, when this was announced, I could not wait. I pre ordered it, I was all set to go. It showed up on my doorstep. The UPS guy was annoyed that he had to carry it because it's heavy. Um, but if you're talking about a classic Thor run, this is it. I mean, Thor is an interesting character in the Marvel Universe because he exists in two worlds. He exists in Asgard and he exists on Earth. Asgard is big and loud and full of swords and sorcery and armor and monsters and th I just gotta, I gotta put this down. <laughs> I can't hold it up any longer. And Simonson's run excelled at that. He, he does these big action sequences. He, he does... Simonson, first of all, his art, he's not an artist we talked about enough, I think. We need to talk about him more. He is amazing and his stuff is very epic in scale. And for Thor, that's perfect. Thor is an epic character. So when you think of Thor fighting different, you know, having huge battles in Asgard, all the, all the politics with his family and his father, it just fits. Thor's art fits. Thor fits with Simonson's art. Thor doesn't draw himself. That's Captain America. Thor and Simonson work perfectly together. When I think of Thor, I still think of that sort of hard-edged style of Simonson's and to me, to me, this is perfect. If you are looking for a Thor run, if you're looking for the Thor run, the only Thor run you ever really need, it's Simonson's Thor. Great Thor runs by the creators, not just counting that. Kirby, Jurgens, um, JMS, people love that stuff. Good runs. But this, to me, if you're talking about one Thor run, one, Simonson. Simonson's the man. Now, there seems to be a resurgence. Now, obviously, the movie's coming out, so they're putting out all this Thor stuff, but IDW is putting out a book in July that's based on this. They licensed from Marvel the right to put out an art book featuring Simonson's uncolored Thor work. That's coming out in July. It's $100. It's an oversized book. If you see the Rocketeer book, it's gorgeous. They basically take the original pages, which Simonson has. He's never sold any of his artwork. Um, so they got all the pages from Simonson. They're putting them together into an art book, uncolored. It's going to basically the original, original page size, pretty much. And you get to see what he, how, what he drew and how he drew it without the benefit of color. Now, color is great. Color enhances. This new omnibus has been recolored. It looks gorgeous. But to see Simonson's original work is going to be really exciting. I'm going to definitely get check that out. So there's this omnibus. If you're a big fan of Thor and you want to, the, this is the definitive Thor for me is Simonson's. Pick up this omnibus. It's big. It's heavy. It's thick. This will hold you. This is four years worth of books here. Um, but also check out that art book, Mighty W, if you're interested in all Simonson's work. And, uh, you know, if it's, it's, it's a definitive run. It's one of the most important pieces of comics from the 80s. It gets overshadowed a bit. It doesn't get talked about a lot. But to me, you can't discount Simonson's Thor. It's wonderful. And, and there's an inscription. I didn't even notice. It's sort of buried under back here. It says, Whosoever shall possess this omnibus, should he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. <laughs> You are absolutely right, Connor. The Walt Simonson Thor run is the run of all Thor runs for the most part. But I thought I would take a look at the, the top five list of best Thor artists. Now, Thor has a look, and his world has a look unlike anybody else in the Marvel Universe. It, it's its own thing. It doesn't exist 
here on Midgard. For the most part, it's it's in Asgard and in oh, the Nine Realms, blah, blah, blah. And the artists can really go nuts. So this is actually kind of a fun list to put together, but a little bit challenging. Uh, oh. Number five, Oliver Koypel. Uh, he was the most recent artist on the on the J. Michael Straczynski run, sort of the last big run on Thor. And, and he's notable because he redesigned Thor's costume, which is pretty incredible because nobody seemed to complain about it. Thor's been around forever. His costume looked the same. And, and Koypel came up with something that looks new and more modern, but in a way that actually works with the Norse gods. Uh, but it didn't upset anybody. Like, it just worked. And I think that people realized that right away. I love that costume. It's a wonderful redesign. But besides that, the art's beautiful looking. And it, it all just kind of worked together. And, and having Asgard there juxtaposed with the real life uh, was a really neat thing. And, and his, his art's just very majestic. Next up, uh, John Romita Jr., John Romita Jr. is actually the guy who was the first artist on a, on a run that I read for a really long time. And obviously the influence of, of another artist who we're going to get to is very apparent. But uh, Romita is a guy who, who doesn't really need to stick to reality. He can do things nuts, and, and Thor is kind of the best thing for that. So that the bigger the headdresses get and the, the backgrounds of Asgard and all that stuff, it's a ton of fun. And, and you get all that energy in, in Thor swinging his hammer around and flying and things. And so the, the really specific photorealistic stuff doesn't need to come into play at all, and he was great for that. Next up, uh, John Busema. Now, John Busema was the guy who followed up the number one guy we're going to talk you know who it is i'm just i don't want to say it yet cuz we're going to get there but he was he had a big 100 issue or so run on thor uh, and like when i i think that busimo was the first guy who i thought of when i saw thor and it was way back from reading how to draw comics the marvel way you remember that book about how to how to draw everything and i copied all the pictures out of it that i could and i made it I made every piece of it as good as i could but i could never draw that well but that those pencil drawings of thor and his sort of take on it and taking what the original artist had done and turning it into something new is, is absolutely legendary and his stamp is, is on there. He sort of took what had come before and he added like a third dimension to it, a bit of roundness and shape instead of just all crazy ideas. Number two, well this is obvious, is Walt Simonson. We just talked about the big book that he did and you know he took it in a way that was both classic and modern at the time and I still look at the pages that Walt Simonson did and they, they just they crackle, they jump, they, they they don't look like anything else. They're instantly recognizable. You can tell exactly who did them and you know exactly the story. And I don't know if there's any other sort of world or character set in, in Marvel or DC that, that would sort of capture that ability that well. And and Simonson threw it all on the page there and, and, and he made Beta Ray Bill look good. And that doesn't he's a weird looking ugly horse dude. And I've seen Beta Ray Bill drawn since then and I don't want to look at it, but I want to look at it when Walt Simonson does it. Number one, it's Jack Kirby. Jack is the king. Jack created the look of Thor and how all that crazy Asgardian spires and swirls and, and I guess what sort of looks like those tribal tattoos now, but when you look at, at Hela's headdress and, and Odin's ever expanding and crazy helmets and, and Loki's horns that if I've seen Loki's horns from here and I've seen Loki's horns way out here, but that all sprang from the, the mind of Jack Kirby, which was this indomitable fount of imagination and, and he captured all that stuff on paper in a way that you know, he did it in, in the fourth world gods and he did it in in some of the some of the stuff in the Marvel universe, but when he could really let loose you know, in Asgard with Thor and things like that. That was when you were like, this is, this is Jack Kirby at his finest. He doesn't have to draw all these, these plain Midgardian buildings. He doesn't have to do that because he's Jack Kirby. So you can't go wrong with any of those artists at all when you're talking about Thor, but to look at all of them is a separate joy unto itself. And if you want to know more, get to ifanboy.com. You can comment on this show. Tell us what your favorite Thor runs are, favorite Thor artists. You can, you'll have a place to talk about the movie because we'll also be having the Thor Special Edition Podcast. We're going to go see the movie, and all three of us are going to talk it up, say what we like, what we didn't like. You've seen it before, but it's definitely going to be a fun show because it's a movie that we're all looking forward to a lot. You can write to contact at ifanboy.com. If you want to email us, you can call us at 888-FANBOYS, which is 326-2697, or you can follow us at twitter.com slash ifanboy. And uh, I say the yay to Thor. Uh, that, and I'm going to... Hold on. Maybe I have to hit it harder. I don't want to break the mic. It may not be Mjolnir, so I don't know. That's a bad joke, what that is. When it looks really good, it has all the elements of the original costume, and there's... Oh, Jesus! I'm fairly certain that's bad. I'm, I don't know a lot about religion, but yeah.
Jesus.